I know 50 degrees isn't really cold to most of you people, but that's cold to me. I am warm blooded, maybe cold blooded. Whichever blood doesn't react to the cold well, that's me. Switching over all the discs from my grip bag back into the Squatch bag, because I had a tournament this week and I was in the rain and I don't have a rain cover for this. So had to bust out the grip bag again. I think that's everything. We're good. I got a license plate, by the way. Some of you people are acting like you're gonna snitch on me in the comment section. So we are out here at Pleasant View. I'm playing a friendly little match battle with Brandon, the nicest guy in Russellville. That'll be tomorrow's video. So in the meantime, I have like an hour and a half. So we're gonna vlog. Alrighty, one off the tee today. We're not playing for score. I'm just here to talk, give you guys a little life update. Good thing I only need one off the tee. Oh, please come back. I hope I didn't lose that. One hole off the tee and I've already thrown it in the water. What in the hell? Just my luck. Oh, this better reach. Please come back. Got it. This is how we're starting our day. Well, now that we got that back, as far as tournaments, your boy got first place this weekend. Disclaimer, I was the only guy playing open. So I don't know how I feel about that. Like it's cool that I got a win, but like, should that even be allowed? And on top of that, I paid $35 for the tournament and I won 22 bucks. I literally lost money to get first place. I signed up for the tournament like a week in advance and then that Thursday it started calling for rain through Sunday. So I decided to keep on playing. Ended up not raining as bad as everybody thought, but it was still pretty yucky conditions, which is why I didn't film. Your boy put together a pretty solid round. I had a birdie putt on 17 of the 18 holes and the one hole I didn't have a birdie putt, I ended up going out of bounds. I think that's out of bounds too. Oh my gosh, I am lucky. Through the tournament, I was 100% C1 heading into the last three holes. Oh gosh, how am I getting down here? And then I ended up going back to back band hits on 20 footers, which that was so much fun. <sighs> it's kind of best case scenario. Circle twos, I made like two 40 footers and then metal on everything else. No air ball putts, that's pretty impressive for me at least. Two more tournaments coming up. We got a two day event at Persimmon Ridge, which is a B tier and I'm feeling great. My game right now, it sucks that I suck this entire season, but coming down the stretch, your boy is feeling amazing. But anyways, Northwest Arkansas Open, a three day event out in Fayetteville, ending the season with an A tier. Boy, I am excited. All right, let me, let me get a little ace run on this real quick. Do it for the one time. Nope. Good thing I got another chance. This origin right now, money. I've got it seasoned in perfectly, but it's fall time and this is going to be the disc that I lose. So I might have to pop in that blue Midnight Pro unless something crazy happens right now. Look at the nasty hyzer flip on that. <sighs> I'm literally gonna have to put that disc up before I lose it. So this entire season, the number one thing that's been killing me has been my mental game. And I think I finally bounced back from that, I think. I mean, it's only been a couple weeks, but one thing that is for sure is I've definitely fallen back in love with the game. I never really feel out of love with it, but these last few months where disc golf was starting to feel more like, uh, like work. And then once it started feeling like work, I then started becoming overwhelmed with work. I would literally wake up every single morning, putt for 30 minutes, go to work, get off of work, play one to two rounds. And then as soon as I got home, I'd putt for 30 more minutes and then I'd start editing disc golf and thinking disc golf, like everything was so disc golf. And then it just became not fun. Mainly because when I'd come out to play, it was less of like, hey, I'm gonna come out and enjoy the day and more of like, I better shoot my PR today. And if that didn't happen, then I'd be like very annoyed mentally. Like I'd be like, dang, dude, you're out here playing every single day and you're still shooting the same scores. I was just being very mean to myself, which then goes into the mental side of disc golf. And boy, does my mental suck. It did suck. I think I fixed it. I was talking with Caleb and I was like, dude, it's so annoying. Cause like, how do you fix your mental? Like you can't really do like mental pushups or like, I don't know, you can read a book maybe. But uh, I was talking to him about it and we, we couldn't really figure it out. I started going on runs. I tried to change up my appetite. The mental still stuck. And then I signed up for jujitsu classes, which is kind of the polar opposite of disc golf. Disc golf, you're just playing fetch. Jujitsu, people are trying to kill you. But even though they're not the same thing, there's two aspects about it that I think have greatly helped my game. I'm about to throw this hoe in, watch this. Aruken. Nope. The first thing, I'm taking five classes a week and your boy already has a tight schedule. So I was forced to cut back on some disc golf. And I think that's helped tremendously because now when I have the opportunity to go play, I'm like thankful for it. And I'm like, yeah, I get to play disc golf and I don't get choked out. So that's kind of helped me like appreciate it more rather than having it every single day. It's kind of like chocolate. <laughs> Dumb comparison, but if you have chocolate every single day, you're going to get burnt out on chocolate. But if you limit yourself to chocolate, you start to appreciate that chocolate when it comes around. Number two, boy does that class teach you how to be cool, calm, and collected. When there's like a grown man choking you out 
the worst thing you can do is like freak out. So they constantly stress to just breathe, be calm under stressful situations, which is literally the key to disc golf. Like when something bad happens on the course, the worst thing you can do is freak out and get mad. Just roll with the punches, which is something that I'm learning big time in that class. It also really puts things into perspective where somebody's literally trying to break your arm and then you leave that class and go play disc golf and you get a double bogey. You're like, eh, it's not that bad. <sighs> that was a great backstop that was about to go out in the water. I'm also not saying this after like my first day of class, but I've been doing five classes a week, every single week for six weeks straight. And dude, my game literally feels different. Like some of you guys have even commented and said so yourself, which I really appreciate. You're feeding into my ego now. I think I'm unstoppable. <sighs> We're gonna take a second. We're gonna get this hole dialed in. I got three PA3s that I'm willing to throw just to hit this freaking line. I mean, we hit the line. It only took one PA3. I'm still throwing the other two. Oh, please, 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 please. <laughs> See, if I didn't take jujitsu, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Third time's charm. I think that's all I'm gonna throw. But anyways, jujitsu. Don't get scared. This is not turning into a jujitsu podcast. I'm just expressing what's going on in homeboy's life. Now, I can put together a little compilation of me getting choked out because that's basically all that's happening in that class right now. The one downside of jujitsu is your boy be getting hurt in that class. And it's kind of like inevitable, but I've got a couple of jammed finger bruises all over my body. My neck be hurting. I'm absolutely loving it though. If they end up like breaking my arm or something, I might have a change of heart, but until then, 10 out of 10 recommend. <sighs> But what I do 100% recommend is if disc golf is the only thing that you're doing right now, it's your only hobby and you're getting high on your own supply, branch out, try some other things, go paint or do something else. And then you might find yourself falling back in love with the sport. At least that's kind of what happened for me. Enough of that emotional drama stuff. I'm about to ring this bad boy up. Oh, we just lost our Mako 3. Ah! Dude, I'm getting too close to the water right now. All right, we're gonna try and lose our Midnight Prowl. Nasty hyzer flip. Oh, you bastard. Another thing that's actually helped my game, I keep thinking of stuff. What happens when you talk nonstop? But I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but I haven't been taking anything in or out of my bag. I've stopped losing discs. And this whole time I've been getting more and more familiar with my stuff. When you keep putting stuff in and out of your bag, you don't know that disc. You had a great round with it. That's why you put it in the bag. That was literally my number one rule going into the season. And then like second week of the year, I'm like, dude, I'm gonna put this in the bag. I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna put this in. In situations where it really makes a difference is when you play with your bag nonstop, you know what you can do in the wind. You know what you can do in the rain. You know how your discs skip. When you put in a new disc, you don't know how that's gonna act in the wind, so on and so forth. But I'm starting to know this bag like the back of my hand. I'm gonna empty the bag on this until I get one really far down there. I just wanna see if we can like mulligan eagle this hole. Okay, that, we'll think about that one. It's far down there, but I'm off the fairway. I want to be on the fairway. That might be perfect. Oh, that's it. That's the one. That is the one. My instinct was about 30 feet farther than this one, but I did not have a look at the basket. But from here, I'm like 120. Yeah, not taking that one. Just like that. Freaking branch, dude. What? I'm sure the lighting was terrible. My apologies. Bomber hole up next. I'm going to end it on a test. I want to see if I can throw farther playing a hyzer flip, mashing something flat, or doing a turnover. Part of me feels like I can generate more power with hyzer, but the other part of me thinks that I'm throwing it farther when I play like a turnover shot. But I don't know. We're going to figure it out. Here is the hyzer flip up first. Hyzer flip the turn. Wow. That was a good little showcasing. C-Line DD3, pretty stable, hard and flat, which is the hardest thing for me to do. That was not hard and flat. I mean, maybe it was. Oh wow, that's right there next to it. Now the Innova made S-Line DD3, playing a little Anheuser shot. Those are all three right on top of each other. 
This does not help me. That doesn't tell me anything. These are all within 30 feet of each other. Hey, I'm gonna hit all these on the rangefinder just to just to piss off the internet distance haters. Color Glow DD3, which was my hyzer flip. 472. The S line DD4 84. And then the most stable disc that I threw was the C line DD3. This is the one that I threw flat. And it is. Oh, you tease, dude. 496. Into. And we have eh, right to left wind. All right. Let's see if we can hit the eagle putt. Kind of a cheeky little par four. Pretty easy. We are 112 feet from the pin. I'm giving myself two tries. Here we go. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go for real this time. 